My name is Sister Barbara Schrader. It was the year 1925, the canonization of St. Therese, and the year that my parents, Ben and Sophia, got married. They had a great love for St. Teresa, and they promised her that the first daughter God would give them would be named Teresa. Four years later, their promise was fulfilled when they were blessed with a healthy baby girl. I was that tiny baby. As I grew older, my mom told me the story of St. Teresa, the little flower, and pointed out the statue of her in our parish church. From the time I was a little child, even to this day, I have a close relationship with this saint. I would go up to the statue as a little girl and my prayer would be, Little Flower, you were a sister. Please help me be one too. Our family lived on a farm with a lot of animals, fields, and plenty of space to entertain one another. We even had our own family softball team that consisted of 11 children and mom and dad. My parents believed that playing together gathering around the kitchen table for three meals a day was equally important as praying as a family. Every night when our chores were done, we would have fun together, followed by prayer before going to bed. We prayed the rosary daily for our vocations, and at the breakfast table, we would pray the morning offering asking God's blessing on our day's activity. One of the hardest decisions I had to face came when I was 14 years old. Being the oldest girl in the family, I knew my mom depended on me to help care for the little ones, and yet the desire to be a sister was all I could think about. Mom told me that if this is what God wanted me to do, God would provide, and that I should seriously pray that I do what was best for me. I was familiar with the sisters at St. Scholastica since my aunt, Sister Anacletus, was a member of that monastery. She was a nurse in the Marlton Hospital, so with her encouragement and my uncle priest from Sibiaco, I came to a decision to enter the monastery at Fort Smith that year. Another drawing card was that my older brother was already at Siviaco, beginning his studies to be a priest. My desire was being fulfilled, but it was also being tested almost immediately after I entered. I was so homesick and being so far from my home in Texas, I cried every time the community gathered for meals or did anything that reminded me of my family. In fact, that was almost all the time for the first few weeks, but it was through the kindness and understanding of the sisters I survived this challenge. Since I was so young, I was given the opportunity to have two years as a postulant before actually entering the novitiate as a novice and receive the habit and a new name, Sister Barbara. In the years to follow, I have plenty of time to make a final decision as to whether this was the vocation I truly wanted. During this time of preparation for this kind of life, I also was preparing myself to be a teacher. By the time I made my final decision to make vows as a religious, I was 21 years old. My first assignment as a teacher was Barley, Arkansas, where I had the first four grades in my classroom. Teaching was my profession for 47 years in the Catholic schools in Arkansas and Texas. I then went to the monastery to do various ministries, there serving our older sisters, working as librarian, 
and as the head of the Diet Kitchen. In 2002, I was asked to do pastoral ministry at St. John's Parish in Russellville, where I served the church for five years. I was called back to the monastery to offer my services. To be a member of St. Scholastica Monastery and following the rule of St. Benedict is one of the best decisions I ever made. My life of prayer, work, and leisure with an open spirit of simplicity, fidelity to God and community, and obedience has led me to live life to the fullest. If there's anyone who is considering a life of really wanting to be a sister, a religious life, any kind of way, and you're afraid, talk about it, but come and try it.